Hi, I'm Lindy Witten. Welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to do a painting, this small photo here, of some beautiful lichen-covered rocks on Flinders Island where I had a week's holiday recently. The photo I like because it's overcast and it gives a muted look to the rocks which are often very bright. But I also did this sketch um, that you can see here. And you can see that that is much brighter. I did this in a little watercolour sketch while I was over there. And I've, I've caught the oranges up there, but I've accentuated the storm back here. So it's I'm going to actually be working more with this in mind than the photo. I'll put the photo up for you uh, while I'm doing the painting so that you can see how I'm going because the sketchbook is rather too large to put in the video. So this is the photo which I'll... Um, it up for you and what I'm going to do now is just look at the paper that we're going to use um, and then we can choose which one we're going to use. Here we are at the stage of trying to work out which uh, colour to use so this is a technique I often tell my students to use in class just lay the photo onto the background. I chose this bluey green because it reflects some of the colours in the water and in these green greys in the rocks so that that could work I've chosen this one because it's one of my favourite colours and I wanted to see how it would look. But in this case, I don't think it's going to work at all because the, the pinky greys just clash too much with the oranges. I thought it might work for the background granite rocks, but it's not going to. Then I moved on to a very dark one because there's some quite darks in there. And whilst that could work in catching the darks, I think it's just going to make it I'll think about that one. <laughs> then I'm moving along to the orange. The orange does really catch that, but it's a very overcast day, and I think the, the sienna colour might be just too much in there, although it would really help with the grass to bring some warms through. Um, this is a colour I rarely use. I don't really like it, but I'm kind of tempted to use it today. I like it for the greys in behind this, the greeny greys of the rocks, so we might give that one a go. So there's no right or wrong answer, except I feel this one is wrong, but any one of these could be used effectively. The pastels I'll be using today are a box of Jack Richardson soft pastels. Um, they're an atmospheric neutral set, and I think they'll work quite well for this scene. I've also got some harder pastels, which are the Rembrandt hard pastels, and then I have just a box of mixed pastels. This is what I often take to class. Um, just a whole lot of different brands there. Okay, so let's get on with this. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a, a wash in to start with. Uh, I'm going to start with just a dark up here in the sky behind the hill. Now in my sketchbook I'd made this much darker so what I'm going to do on this photo is just remind myself I want that dark. So I'm going to go in here with um, a kind of very dark blue there, just painting the negative shapes around the, the hill in the background there. And that'll be the darks in the sky. Um, I'm not going to put that hill in, I'm going to put this little hill in, the water coming along there, and then the rock. I'm going to put in some of the darks in the rock. I'm going to actually use a dark greeny kind of colour and just pull that out. And I'll mingle that with a bit of actual black, real black, and you can see the difference there when I put it on. And then I'll go back into this later with, and here's a bit of purple because what that is are little mussels and, and lichen so I'm just putting that in and then I'll take another darker green just to lay in some of the, the trees along here and I'm going to make them slightly more than in the photo I'll put some up around there Okay, so now I'll just dip my brush into the alcohol. I'm going to start with the lighter colours first, because otherwise my brush gets too 
I'm just moving it around here. I don't mind catching a little bit of the sky colour in there. And that's just going to lay in all the really dark values on this paper. I could have actually chosen um, to put those trees in with a redder colour, which would have given me a bit of complementary underpainting. Now I'm just pulling out these darks in a sort of suggestion of, of those dark clouds around the hills there. Darkest in the middle and then down here for the rocks. I'm just washing that all in and then I'll go back, I'll be working back into that with the oranges and reclaiming some of this greeny grey. So that's just going to be the edge of the rock there. And then I've got another rock which I'm just going to draw in now here. There's a rock sitting up here, that one, and I don't want it to be all on there. I don't want this part of the painting in, so I'm just going to suggest it there and suggest a bit of shadow coming onto this rock. And then there's a, some more rocks coming down here. And I'm just putting in some shapes of some rocks there. Uh, and the shoreline there, while I've got this wet, I'm just going to drag in a little bit of a shoreline there. I'm going to go right in now into the sky uh, and build that up. I'm going to be starting with some light colours up here for a bit of the lights in the light areas in the clouds. And there'll be some pale blues. I'm going to, to work in right from the beginning some of these um, Jack Richardson ones as well. So they've got some beautiful grayed off colours in there. And this is going to be a fairly direct and quick one. Um, not too much layering today. So it's really about doing a direct sketchy kind of painting. I'm going to pop in some more darks in there into those clouds with a bit of pastel. Just pulling it out. Adding up some more mid value there. And that's going to pretty much be the sky. I'm just going to slide in a little bit more suggestion of those darker clouds. And then smooth up a little bit there. Just with a few little movements of my finger. And some of that background greeny blue is showing through, which is helping with the sky. The sky's done. Very quick. Now I'm going to look at those background hills there. There's some really quite nice um, kind of grade of greens that are in this set. So I'm just going to pop in with those along the edge there. And then as I come further down, it's a little bit brighter. So until it gets right down to the shore there. There were lots of warm bat holes around here. It was a really interesting place. Beautiful one, beautiful walk. So I'm just bringing that green right along the shore there and up amongst the Already I've got that laid in. Now I'm going to go back into um, the greens up here. And I'm putting this sort of browny, neutral kind of green. And scrubbing and then we just with some little side strokes. So the hill's pretty much in. Um, I could go in with something a little bit darker just at the base of those to settle them into the landscape and I'll probably add in a little bit of a purpley colour down there as well. So I'm not using very many hards. I'm going straight in with these atmospheric um, 
pastels. I'm going to pop in some of the colours on those rocks there. So just sweep them around like so. And I'm going to bring in a few sort of bits of pinky colour there, bluey green colour along the edge there. And pull just pulling it slightly over the rock there. This is quite a good colour to go in with the the rock, maybe a bit too green, so I'm going in for this more mauvey colour and just suggesting it in there. I'm bringing little bits of it through the dark colours as well and then there's quite a swathe of it around here. Using it very loosely, just putting in the top edges of those and we'll be getting that orangey kind of colour which won't come out of um, the Jack Richardson box because there's really nothing in there that's going to suit but that's okay. Just laying a little bit of that in. I need some darker ones as well so I'm going in with a darker just to put in some little of the um, darker greys and just doing a little slide like that to get some of the creases in the rocks. In here I'm just going to go in with that darker grey around the base there of that rock. And just modify some of these really dark blacks a little bit with it. You can see it's got a kind of a mauvey, ready mauve tinge to that grey. So the rocks are going in. I'm going to put the water in now. Um, and for that, I'm looking for some of the colours out of the um, trees there. I'm actually going to give the trees a few bits of light on them as well. And really for the trees, it's just pulling down like so. I'm giving the trees a little bit of a purpley base as well. That'll just contrast nicely with the, the cooler greens and help them to sit into the landscape a little bit better. I might add a little tiny bit of that to the base of that rock too. Okay, water. So I'm taking some of those colours and dragging them down into the water. I want some of the colours of the grasses as well. And then I'll have some of the sky reflections there as well. Some of those clouds, the darkness of the clouds coming down. You notice that I'm pulling it all down because it's all the reflected colour. Uh, and I'm going to put in a tiny touch of that purple there at some of the bases. And then I'm just going to use my finger and pull it all down like this to get that sort of reflected look. It was quite still the water that day, close to the shore, and really not much happening in the way of waves. So I'm pulling it down to give the reflected look and then. I'll make some lighter coloured little um, wavelets. Let's actually do it in more of that colour. So sort of a, a bit of a blue from the sky reflections, just pulling it across to give the surface of the water there. So now the water's in. I need to do the shoreline and so I'm going back in with uh, a sort of neutrally kind of warm grey there. I'm just pulling it along for the, the little sandy edge of the water. So water's in and where the sand meets the water I can just run my finger along the sand edge and that kind of gives it a bit of a wet look too. 
Now comes the fun part. It's all about the rocks now and getting um, getting in some of that lichen-y colour on them. So I'm going to be going in to some more orangey yellow kind of colours and just dragging them across the surface very lightly, just, just dragging them ever so lightly so they're just touching the surface and lifting off. You can see how well it goes over that dried, darker colour. But this colour, which is working quite well here, is, is a little bit too fierce for me I, when I, I start putting it over the dark. It's just not the right colour. So I'm actually going in with a more peachy kind of colour. And we'll try that. So I don't want to go too overboard with the oranges because I'm going for the muted look for the day. But I do want some little bits of it to be quite bright. This is just going to go around the edge of my rock because I do need the edge of the rock to be fairly sharp. This, these little rocks are getting some, you can't see them in this photo, well you can see them there. In my sketch they're for a little bit of a different angle so I'm just putting them in and not worrying really about the angle, just getting a little bit of colour on them. And over here I'm just going to do a few little suggestions that there are some rocks on the shore there too. Dark base there. And giving these ones a little bit of a dark base as well. Now I'm going to put in some quite orange. I don't need very much of this. Just a few little hints of it here and there. A little bit around the edge there. Just where the lichen is really standing out against the dark. I'm not really referring to that for this, I'm just putting in some little patterns and trying to lead the eye where I want it to go. I think if I do any more that is going to be too much so I'm going to just leave it a bit understated like that. These little holes are looking a little bit um, not quite right so I'm going to actually touch them up a little bit. I'm going to use this colour and I'm just going to pull, oops. It's very, very soft. Just pull them out a little bit to make them a little bit more random. Scattered throughout the... This is where the rock goes back um, to the lighter colour. But I'm, I'm not sure that I actually like that um, coming out like that. I'm, I'm thinking that I might um, bring in a bit of water there. Just bring the water in a little bit. Take a few liberties here and bring the water uh, a little bit up. Since it's drying off now, I just want to tidy up a few areas here. I want to connect that a little bit more with this rock. I'm laying the shadow in there a bit and I want to make the edge of it a little bit more rock-like. So I've just sharpened up that bit of the edge. I need the edge of this rock here to be a bit sharper too so I'm going in with a, a lighter one and just pulling it back there. These little rocks here also need to be sharpened up slightly. Just the edges. Don't want it too sharp out here because I don't want to leave them out. I'm going to give them a little touch more of a, the lichen colours, but not as bright as in here. Now I'm going back into here with some of the lichen colours again, bringing them down into this dark area. Not
Not too much though, because again, I don't want to get too caught up in the bottom corner of the painting. Putting a little bit more of the rock color in there, and just dragging it over some of that. So it's not really, really dark in here. some nasty sharp marks so I'm just giving them a bit of a smooth out with my finger and I'm going to finish up with this dark rich ready purple up in the trees again and maybe just a couple of little touches of it in the rocks there as well I think this is all a bit too bright in there, so some of this is just going to pull underneath the trees there for a little suggestion of a shadowy bit. And then I'm going to go back in with this uh, darker green as well and, and, and give a little bit of extra. back in and restate the trees which are getting a bit lost the shrubs there so in they go Thank you. you can see it's pulling some of the purples up into it which The same colours I used before. Just going in a bit and pull a, a couple of smaller ones down towards the shoreline. The last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of um, more randomness to the lichen by taking a soft pastel and a sharp object, in this case a palette knife, and just giving it a few little scrapings onto there and then I'm going to take that very bright orange one I had as well and give that a just a couple as well and then all I need to do I'm not going to press down on there I'm just going to press down on the rock clean paper press down with my hand in a circular motion just to press those in there and make them adhere. Thanks for joining me for that quick demo of uh, an overcast day using atmospheric neutrals to create a nice soft quick sketchy painting based on a sketch that I did while I was there on the island and a photo that I took. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time in the studio. If you'd like to have a heads up about new videos coming out just subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.